Hi, I'd like to introduce you to the Windows Phone Test Framework, which is an um, environment we put together at Expensify in order to test our um, new Windows Phone 7 app. Um, so the environment provides um, support, particularly on the emulator, although there is some device support as well, to test apps. Um, so um, the app that we'll be testing in this quick demo is called Example App. Um, it's not very exciting. It's just got a first page called Page Name and a button that's enabled after five seconds. When you hit the button, you get taken to a second page with uh, a pivot control on it. So you can see it's got three uh, pivot items. And uh, there's two text boxes on the first pivot control. If you type into the top one, then the text is reversed into the second one. If you choose to break things, then actually um, it stops working. Now obviously the break things is, is there just for demo purposes for our testing um, and uh, I'll show you how that's used in a moment. So that's the application. Um, if you then want to actually see our test environment then uh, the solution for it, um, obviously you're just linked to the binaries but here's the solution for it, um, available on GitHub. Um, it's got a, a few projects within there. There's a big a server section down the bottom that has code to um, use the comm server for the emulator. It's got code for um, opening up a WCF um, service that the emulator client, the application itself, can talk to. And it's also got code to do some uh, Windows mouse and keyboard manipulation onto the emulator. Um, then we've also got at the top the client itself that you have to embed with your application. We've got some command line tools and we've got an example. Um, if I start just by running up emu host, which is our main command line tool, then if I run that up, it's just a uh, command line application. If I show you that side by side with the emulator, um, now what you can do within um, the command line tool is you can use the com API. Um, so that enables you to do things like uninstall your app, so it disappeared, to install it back in again, so that gives you a fresh start. Um, to start your app if you want to using the launch command, and to kill your app if you want to using the stop command. So that's the com API. Um, once you've launched your app, you can also talk to the, um, the use the WCF service to send messages backwards and forwards. So there's a basic ping command, just checking whether or not things are working. Um, you can also, if you want to, um, get hold of um, various bits of information from the screen. Um, or you can send information to the screen. So for example, you can use the automation interfaces to change page name to uh, pwned application. And that sends that across and changes it. Um, or you can invoke um, uh, the pattern handler, so the invoke pattern, for example, on Go, to go to the next page. Um, and once you're here, then you can do things like you can set text on the text box input to Hello World again. And once you've done that, you can then get the text back from the text box output. And you can see it's pulled back the text there of DL well, Hello World backwards. Um, you can also finally, if you want to, send um, messages using the mouse and the keyboard. So, um, for example, you can send a do swipe left to right, which will, you'll see the mouse move, send the, uh, the mouse message across. Um, or if you want to, then you can also use the hardware button. So hardware button back. And that should hopefully have taken you back again. So if I do the same thing again, oops, hardware button back, then you can see you get back to the start. So this is the um, the basic host application. Um, and I, I think you can see how that might be useful. Um, hopefully it is in your everyday tasks. Um, things like the, the GUIDs um, and the, the application package are all passed in on the command line to this um, environment. So at the moment it can only do one application at a time, but there's no reason why you couldn't get it to do others if you wanted to. Um, so let's close that down and pull you back into um, uh, uh, to Visual Studio. Right, so in here, just taking a look at the example app, um, we've added a project called example app spec, and this just has within it a couple of features, which are spec flow features. If you don't know what spec flow features are, there are a few other webcasts out there to find out. Um, and you can also look at what Cucumber does um, within Ruby and, uh, uh, in order to see how um, it's used in other ways. The, the Gherkin is the language underneath. 
um, and Gherkin looks um, very readable. So if we actually just open it up, if it lets us, um, then you can see here is a, a, a Gherkin file, a feature file, um, and this feature is just testing the main page. Um, and you can see um, it's quite readable what's going on. It's uninstalling your app, etc. Um, and there's waiting. And we've got two of these features, as I say. So we've also got a child page feature. Um, and you can run these within Visual Studio using ReSharper or using NUnit Test um, or any other um, of your unit test runners. Um, so for example, let me just run a, um, a test up, which is this pivot page has a pivot which responds to swipes. If we run that test, and it will get taken across to the session and hopefully we'll see it run up we will see it run the uh, simulator and we will see it test that it responds to swipes after it's done that ah it failed because there was actually a problem with that test um that's all part of testing hopefully we'll find out what that problem was and fix it um, let us also now see um, the final piece of the puzzle here, which is we've included um, just kind of a command line um, script. In this case, we use Windows script hosting to run all the tests within the project. Um, so if we run that using uh, the command line environment, um, then what happens is it runs up NUnit. It's actually a special 32-bit version of NUnit, um, just because we, we use this 32-bit com DLL. And what you'll see is this runs through all of the features and all the scenarios in our project. Um, so it will take a couple of minutes to do so. And hopefully we will see it test each of these things. We obviously will get a, um, at least one failure because we've got a deliberate um, scenario that fails. Um, we may get two there because we've also got a problem with the, uh, the scrolling information there. Because we're using um, mouse emulation, it is really important that you don't interact with the machine while this is going on. Um, that's just a limitation of the way we've done it. Um, I think we could add more peer automations within the app. Um, however, um, obviously it's just time at the moment and we are looking for other people who want to join this project and add those. Um, certainly at the moment, it's a very good way of testing whether or not your app really works. Okay, we're getting through the test now, so hopefully um, this might be the last one if we're lucky. Um, obviously quite a lot of this time in the testing is actually just being taken up by the five second delay um, each time the app starts. Right, so that's finished the test, and there's at least one failure there I saw go through. The next thing the script does is run the, um, the spec flow report generator, um, and then it pulls out and actually produces the report. Um, so you can see here that um, it's produced a report about what's succeeded and what's failed. Um, one thing I didn't show you is that within these tests there are um, occasional lines which are then take a picture. Whenever it reaches one of those it actually takes a screenshot um, using um, bitmap image collection on the device. Um, so that might be quite useful for you and I'll show you that again in a moment um, for your apps because you could do that again on a real device if you wanted to. Um, and once you've collected those, then what happens when you actually see the, um, the test running um, is those will show up. So for example, in our broken test, you get to see the entire details of the broken test. And uh, within there, we collect screenshots of what it looked like. So you can see this is the point where it broke because it's at a low world and it really should have had something in the output there. Okay, I think that's a uh, good introduction to the test environment. As I say, it's on GitHub. Um, it's on GitHub under Expensify Windows for Own Test Framework. Um, and uh, it's still very early days for it, but um, we're hopeful it'll be useful for us and useful for a lot of other people out there. Um, and that we'll get lots more people building lots more things for it. Okay, thanks for listening.